Digital ID for everything. Smart cities that track your movement. Central bank digital currencies for all transactions. Restrictions on cash. Sharing your social media information to create a bank account. All sounds like a conspiracy theory, you might say. Well, that's the reality on the ground in Nigeria today. And tomorrow, it'll be a reality in your country too. That is, of course, unless you do something to stop it. Now, the first step to doing anything is to be informed, which is why we're going to tell you what's happening to Nigerians, how they're fighting back, and how you can do the same. Did you know that Nigeria leads the world in crypto adoption? Depending on your source, up to 50% of Nigerians use crypto on a regular basis. This is despite the Nigerian government banning financial institutions from working with crypto in early 2021 and its continued scrutiny of crypto-related entities. This begs the question of why Nigeria leads the world in crypto adoption. The short answer is necessity. Around a quarter of the population is unbanked, but not because banking is unavailable. As the largest country in Africa, Nigeria has some of the most advanced banking infrastructure on the continent. In fact, Nigeria became the first African country to roll out a central bank digital currency, or CBDC, in late 2021. And yet, nobody adopted it. Only 0.5% of Nigerians were using the e-Naira one year later. Even with its elaborate banking infrastructure and a CBDC, cash is still used for up to 80% of payments in Nigeria. This means there's more to Nigeria's crypto adoption than meets the eye. And this ties into the long answer, which is what this video is about. To understand why Nigeria leads the world in crypto adoption, we must go back in time to when it began and analyze the events that have occurred since then. As you'll soon see, we're starting to see a similar series of events in other countries around the world, including in the West. As such, Nigeria could be the canary in the coal mine for what's coming for all of us. The country could also provide a blueprint on how to prevent it using cryptocurrency. So, let's dig in. Now, based on Google search trends, Nigeria's interest in crypto began in 2015 and has been rising ever since. Fun fact, Nigeria consistently comes up as the number one country for global searches of terms related to crypto. Other countries in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East often occupy the other top positions. Logically then, something must have happened in 2015 that caused Nigerians to start adopting crypto, especially Bitcoin. The obvious reason would be that it's because of the crypto bull market which began around that time. The thing is that Nigeria's crypto interest has been rising ever since. The answer to this riddle can be found in Nigeria's Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, a measure of the country's economic output. As you can see, Nigeria's GDP collapsed in 2015 and never really recovered. This was almost certainly due to a global collapse in oil prices, which began the previous year. For context, Nigeria is the largest oil producer in Africa and one of the largest oil producers in the world. Naturally, oil is Nigeria's largest revenue source. According to Al Jazeera, oil sales are how the Nigerian government gets 75% of its revenue. Put simply, Nigeria is heavily dependent on oil and oil prices. The fact that Nigeria happens to have the largest oil reserves in Africa has also made it one of the most geopolitically important countries on the continent. Lo and behold, the United States and China have both been trying to influence Nigeria for decades, including directly interfering in its elections. So, when the Nigerian economy imploded in 2015, the World Bank didn't hesitate to step in with yet another multi-billion dollar loan. For reference, the World Bank is an international development bank that's closely allied with the United States and issues loans with conditions that support US interests. If you want evidence of this, just watch our recent video about Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's recent hearing. It was filled with discussions about how the US could better use the World Bank to influence not only developing countries in places like Africa, but also developed countries in places like Europe. 
If you've seen that video already, you'll recall that the World Bank has recently been issuing loans that include conditions on restricting fossil fuel development. Now, this is bad news for Nigeria, given its dependency on the oil industry. Nigeria is also one of the World Bank's biggest borrowers. According to Reuters, the World Bank has issued no less than 130 loans to Nigeria. It's not entirely clear how much money Nigeria currently owes the World Bank as a result, but a Nigerian news report from last year noted that it owed $13 billion, making Nigeria the World Bank's fourth largest debtor. And it's not just restrictions on fossil fuels that the World Bank has been demanding from Nigeria either. If you watched our video about digital ID or fast payments, you'll know that the World Bank has been rolling out both in its debtor countries with the help of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Case in point, the World Bank gave $400 million to Nigeria to create a national digital ID in 2019, and it's just one of many digital ID funds the country has received from the US-affiliated entity. This investment seems to have paid off. 100 million Nigerians, almost half the country, now have digital ID. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Nigerians have been rushing to adopt this digital ID. In fact, the only reason they have is because the Nigerian government made it mandatory. You reportedly need a digital ID to get a driver's license, to get a SIM card for your phone, and, apparently, to participate in elections too. And if that wasn't scary enough, the Nigerian government is now reportedly planning on, quote, combining banking cards with its national ID, be it physical or digital. This is almost exactly what the EU is planning with its digital ID wallet. As the name suggests, the EU's digital ID will come with a built-in wallet. And this is not a coincidence either. Remember that $400 million the World Bank gave to Nigeria to develop its digital ID? The EU was one of the contributors to the massive cash pile. And the EU probably didn't do this out of kindness. It most likely did it to test the system it's about to roll out in Europe. It seems the US has been running tests of its own as well. The company that helped Nigeria's central bank build its CBDC is American, and the same company is now helping Ukraine build its CBDC. But that's just the American side of the Nigerian crypto adoption equation. The Chinese side is just as scary, if not more so. Whereas the World Bank has been giving loans to Nigeria with strings attached, China has been building much of Nigeria's modern infrastructure. Russia has been playing a role as well. Per a press release by the CCP, quote, China is the leading contributor to Nigeria's infrastructure development. More than 20 Chinese companies are participating in the construction of major projects concerning the economy and people's livelihood in Nigeria, comprising of railways, roads, electricity, ICT, and oil refineries. Now, that last part should give you pause. China is also involved in Nigeria's oil industry. In case it wasn't clear enough, China has been meddling in Nigeria's affairs for quite some time. However, it wasn't until the economic implosion in 2015 that China's presence started to have a negative effect on the local population. The New York Times wrote a sobering article about this. The TLDR is that China has been flooding Nigeria with cheap Chinese goods and commodities, presumably those that don't meet the quality standards for export to developed countries. As a result, Nigeria's infrastructure is faulty and unreliable, and its local economy has been entirely priced out. Here's what I mean by priced out. Quote, Angry protesters in the street blame widespread joblessness on China, which is manufacturing African fabric designs more cheaply than Nigeria. Employment in Nigeria's textile and apparel sector has plummeted to 20,000 people from 600,000 two decades ago. Now, the consequence of this is that Nigeria's unemployment has been skyrocketing since 2015 and is projected to reach 41% by the end of this year. The absence of a local economy has made Nigerians heavily reliant on remittances, money sent from overseas. This has contributed to its crypto adoption. 
If that wasn't bad enough, the Nigerian government appears to be expanding its relationship with China despite the damage this is doing to its local economy. For instance, Nigeria's vice president gave a speech just a couple of months ago basically saying that the West can't be trusted and China is a better ally. Now, this is understandable when you consider the history between Nigeria and US-affiliated international organizations like the World Bank. Once upon a time, the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, issued loans to Nigeria. The conditions attached were so bad that the IMF is still hated by Nigerians to this day. At least China has been building infrastructure, as the proponents claim. In truth, though, China has been doing the same, just in a different way. If you watched our video about how China is taking over Africa, you'll know that it has, like the World Bank, also been issuing loans to African countries. The difference is that it often requires physical infrastructure as collateral, physical infrastructure often built by China itself. When these countries can't pay back their loans, China comes in and claims the infrastructure as its own. Newsflash, Nigeria isn't in a very good financial position. Besides the billions it owes to international organizations like the World Bank, Nigeria also owes billions of dollars to other countries. As you might have guessed, Nigeria owes the most money to China, around $5 billion. To put things into perspective, that's over 80% of Nigeria's foreign debt. There's speculation that Nigeria will default on these debts sometime this year, in which case China will likely seize much of its physical infrastructure as compensation. But that's just the Chinese part of the Nigerian crypto adoption equation. The final part of the equation is Nigeria itself, specifically its government. As is often the case with countries that receive lots of money from overseas, Nigeria is incredibly corrupt, and it seems that this corruption is only increasing. For those who don't know, Nigerian officials are infamous for embezzling the country's oil money, which I'll remind you makes up almost 75% of the government's revenue. The famous case comes from 2016, when a whopping $16 billion in oil revenues were reported missing by the government's treasury. Some sources suggest that Nigerian officials have embezzled more than half a trillion dollars of the government's revenues over the last 50 years. The practical effect of this is apparently that Nigerians don't want to pay taxes because they know the money won't be spent on infrastructure. Most of it will just be stolen. This is probably a contributing factor to the average Nigerian's apparent hatred for international organizations like the World Bank and suspicion of predatory countries like China. And there have been multiple reports of Nigerian officials embezzling this money too, and it seems to be getting worse. This is due to a combination of the oil-related factors I mentioned earlier. First, oil prices plummeted. Then the World Bank and others came in with loans that required Nigeria to restrict its oil production. And then China came in and started taking over key parts of Nigeria's oil infrastructure. This means that the only way Nigeria's corrupt politicians can make money is by essentially appeasing both sides. They're rolling out digital ID and CBDCs to get money from the World Bank, and they're rolling out all kinds of faulty and unreliable infrastructure to get money from China. The worst part is that what Nigerian officials claim to be doing and the consequences their actions are having are completely contradictory. Take the e Naira, for example. In theory, it's meant to increase financial inclusion. In practice, however, you can only access it if you already have a bank account. Now, to be fair, this is something that could easily be changed, and it's possible that it has been by the time of shooting this video. But even then, Nigerians do not have the reliable physical infrastructure required to adopt the e Naira. Consider that almost half the country still doesn't have internet access. Nevertheless, Nigerian officials don't seem to care because they still seem hell-bent on effectively banning cash to force CBDC adoption, probably to get more World Bank money. Some of you might have seen all the headlines about Nigeria restricting cash use for exactly that purpose late last year. What you might not have seen was the headline about the Nigerian Central Bank wanting to remove certain banknotes from circulation. The TLDR there is that this move would have reportedly resulted in over 80% of Nigeria's cash 
becoming worthless and 50% of Nigerians losing their life savings in the process. Fortunately, in February this year, Nigeria's Supreme Court stepped in to stop the old banknote ban from going into effect. Unfortunately, it's believed this was done for political reasons because all the Supreme Court did was delay the old banknote ban to December this year. There were elections in February. Since that time, we've seen other insane headlines related to both the Nigerian government and Nigeria's central bank. Highlights include the creation of smart cities where every citizen will be tracked using their digital ID and will require social media information as part of KYC to create a bank account. This foreshadows restricting freedom and financing for Nigerians who openly disagree with the government's corrupt officials, which is terrifying to say the least. Not surprisingly, Nigerians haven't been too keen on opting into this kind of system, which is why they've been opting out using cryptocurrency and cash. It looks like cryptocurrency could soon be the only alternative available to many Nigerians. That's because the physical Naira has been collapsing ever since the government removed its currency peg in June. According to the government, the Naira lost 23% of its value overnight. According to locals, it was 40%. Chances are that this was one of the conditions of the loans granted to Nigeria by US or China-affiliated entities, most likely the former, as it was reportedly done to incentivize foreign investment. Then again, it could just as easily be Nigeria itself. Hyperinflating away cash is a great way to force CBDC adoption. Now, this brings us to the question of how you can use cryptocurrency to protect yourself from a similar outcome in your country. Make no mistake, digital ID, CBDCs, smart cities, and all these other dystopian technologies are being rolled out around the world and quicker than you may think. Nigeria just seems to be further ahead. Thankfully, protecting yourself is a simple two-step process. The first step is to assess where your country is on the risk curve, so to speak. If you live in a country that's receiving large amounts of money from US-aligned organizations like the World Bank and IMF, it's safe to assume that the digital dystopia is coming sooner to your country than others. This doesn't just apply to developing countries, by the way. If you live in a European country that's receiving lots of money from the EU, then you're probably further up on the risk curve than you may think. The same could be true at the state level. States that are the most dependent on federal funding are likely more at risk. This sounds silly until you realize that most countries aren't that different from Nigeria. We all have corrupt officials in our governments. Any money these officials or the government gets comes with strings attached. I should also note that this money doesn't just come from the public sector. It also comes from the private sector as well. Money that comes from megabanks like JP Morgan and asset managers like BlackRock comes with similar terms and conditions. This is probably because all these dystopian initiatives have their roots in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. More about those in the description. I digress. Now, the second step is to assess whether your country is actually capable of implementing all of these dystopian technologies. As we've seen with Nigeria, the physical infrastructure isn't always there, nor is the coordination. Widespread corruption can paradoxically be a plus because it delays the rollout. And even if the physical infrastructure and coordination are present, the willingness may not be. The technology could be rolled out, but its adoption may not be enforced. And even if its adoption is enforced, its usage may not be. This is something we've mentioned many times. Adoption doesn't guarantee use. Now, if you've determined that your country is capable of implementing all of these dystopian technologies and is willing to do it, then your number one imperative is to ensure that alternatives continue to exist. That means doing everything you can to ensure that cryptocurrency and cash remain legal. There have, in fact, been a few proposals floated in European countries to ensure that cash use is enshrined in law. Even the European Central Bank proposed enshrining cash use in law when it submitted its proposal for the digital euro. Perhaps they know that there are other ways of eliminating cash. The harsh reality is that cash alone is not enough to protect you against what's coming. 
Crypto is also required, and some would argue that gold is required too. So, the imperative is to ensure that you always have an ability to store and transfer wealth that's outside of the dystopian system being created. Now, in some countries, these dystopian systems will never see the light of day. In others, however, they will be implemented and could last for a long time before they inevitably collapse. So if you think you're in the latter camp, make sure you have the ability to relocate just in case. Let's hope, of course, that it doesn't come to that. And that's all for today's video, folks. If you found it informative, let me know by smashing that like button. If you want to keep being informed, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to inform others, take a second to share this video. Now, if you're already stacking sats in preparation for what's coming, make sure you're storing them in a safe place and accumulating them using a reliable crypto exchange. The Coin Bureau Deals page has massive discounts on the former and up to $40,000 of airdrops and bonuses on the latter. The link will, of course, be down in the description. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.